So I am ready to get going with this. This is something I have been wanting to do for a while to be able to talk about how to help people create themes for a world anvil. I love to create themes. I have been trying to create several of my own for each of my new worlds and I just absolutely love it. For, but for me, it always starts out with a group of colors. So we're going to be talking about how to create your own test palette today. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of them. So one of the first palettes I created was for my author world. Uh, I created a, a, a theme I called Aurora and um, through various things I didn't end up releasing it as a, as a world anvil theme but I absolutely loved it. I created a, a template of all the different colors and ingredients that I would work with for it. And then when I created my world for Bane of the Shadow, I also did the same thing, but a little simpler. So I'll show you guys that one. I do a page like this for each of my each of my worlds now. I didn't for my first one, Liminal Chronicles, but ever since then I, I have. So here are the colors and the gradient that I will use on my backgrounds and my text and whatever for Bane of the Shadow. So I wanted something bright and bordering on obnoxious, not quite obnoxious, um, just because I wanted that, that in-your-face techie feel, but also kind of with a, mixed with a little bit of a tribal feel, so that's, that's why I picked out the, the color combinations that I did, so some of them are really bright and some of them are, are more muted, so, anywho, so those are a couple samples, but I did those with a different a set of CSS and containers because the, the container code was from Adamo as a gift in the Discord. So I wanted a way to, to share being able to create a color palette instead of just a, a group of boxes the, the, the way that I had done it with Adamo's code with you and be able to share with you guys today. So I have a sample in a tutorial I'll be sharing with you guys and I forgot to put the bot up with the notes so this is oh, where are our notes let me copy it here so today's notes are oops that's the tutorial we'll be doing Here we go. The show notes are available here. So anyway, I'll show you guys how to create your own rows of different colors today using Bootstrap and CSS and containers and sections. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial for grandmasters and up in so if you're not a grandmaster and up, I'm sorry, I I can't do tutorials for everything for all, all all levels all the time. So this is this is this has been one of my passions from the beginning was to be able to show people some of the really incredibly cool things you can do with containers. So hey second hand, good to see ya. Alrighty, I have to pull up my notes. 
notes again here. Hey Laura, good to see ya. So, <laughs> I showed you guys a, a couple of the examples that I had used. Uh, I'm gonna go through and do a palette creation. Hi, Crostatina. I'm gonna show you guys how to do, how I created this this little sample and, and the, the steps I went through and then I'll, um, I also have the code that you can just copy and paste, but I wanted you guys to know where it was coming from and how I created it so that you can easily edit it for your own tastes. So, let's do this. What I did at first was, oops, close those up, we don't need those anymore. I created a container in CSS because I can just type container in here. Uh, let's see, we'll just type container and if we call it um, palette and each each little palette box is going to be a different color but we'll just call it palette for now we just kind of have to basically design the box do it right now we don't have anything but color bun on there and I'll just say the text because we haven't defined the, the box for it so we're gonna do that over here and I have to rename it I'm sorry I have glaring white on the screen I had to reinstall Chrome today <laughs> so not everything is quite set up the way I'm used to it's throwing me off a little bit So we called our, our first class palette. And so we want we want to define it. I usually like to give uh, my boxes rounded corners. So that's one of the first things I set up usually. It's, I usually use about 10 pixels. And we need to give it Oh hi Kahuna! Welcome guys! <laughs> Thank you so much for the raid. It's very sweet of you guys. So right now I'm creating some color palettes and showing you guys how to set them up and create them for your own world anvil theme so that you can make sure your colors work together. So aloha everyone. Thank you for showing up. Thank you. And thank you for the follow. I cast Bolt. That's a fun name. I like your name. <laughs> Hey Kahuna, thank you. So we got RPG Dinosaur Bob and Kahuna and iCast Bot. Well, thank you guys. And Darth Nick. Hi, Darth Nick. So I was just setting up uh, my little test palette boxes. I was showing people how I was creating my, um, my color palette here. So hi, Dragon Love Water. So I was creating the the box initially, and then I'll, then we'll fill in with each of the colors, and we'll set up a row of them. So on my my boxes, and here's our our test container to create our container. I always like to make my count corners rounded, so I did a border radius of 10 pixels, so it rounds it by about 10 pixels, and then. I usually like to put a border around my palette boxes, so, oops, not capital B, border, uh, one pixel, oops, one pixel, and then we'll do a solid colored, or solid border instead of a dotted or dashed, and we'll do this one in white. And then we should be able to go over here and we have our box. So that's that's going to be the base, the basics of our box. 
In here I also like to change my font size and add a little bit of padding. The padding on here, let's see. It's not bad, but if we're going to get a whole bunch of them, we're going to have to definitely define it. So I do like to, once I get my box done, I like to pick a few colors to play with. So I have on my tutorial here, I gave you guys a, a link to the color picker I like to use. And then you can use any one of them, obviously, of course, but this one is one that I really like to use. Oh, why am I getting ads on here? Oh, well, I can handle Bluehost. So if we wanted to do, I don't know, I kind of have a thing for lime green. Let's do a, a lime green thing here, lime, instead of lime green colored boxes. So we'll start from kind of an avocado green. Eh, let's do something prettier. Let's do blue. Start from a nice blue. So I'm just going to copy that hex value. And we're going to set up a... Color... Oops. Color 1 class. I need to put a dot in front of it. the background of anything with this color, this particular color. And I need to add the color one class into my container. So when you're using containers, you can stack your classes. So I have my palette class that defines the outside of my box and my color class that defines the inside of my box. Hi Rabbit Candy Boy, good to see ya. So I have those defined. We're going to save it and we're going to update it. Oops. And poof, we have a nice blue box. So we have our, our proof of concept. We have box we have an ability to color it and so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys the next trick in the box uh, I, I had promised in a, a real quick toe dip into bootstrap so we're gonna go and talk about bootstrap a little bit on my tutorial here I have a link to the bootstrap grid reference so just just to give you guys a little bit of background on how this works the bootstrap grid system breaks your screen or whatever area it is allowed to fill into 12 different columns so um, you can have up to you can use a columns one at a time, or you can use four at a time, or six at a time, or 12 at a time, however many at a time you want, up to 12. And it, it works out really slick. So if you ever see like column, C-O-L, M-D, or S-M, or I think, oh yeah, L-G, uh, those, those tell you what screen sizes those are gonna work on. So um, if it's, if you're using those columns for a small screen, they're going to show up on a small screen. But if you're saying it only works on a medium screen and up, you'd use medium. So call medium and then how many other columns you want to take up. So I'm going to check Rabbit Candy White's question here. I have a question for anyone in the chat. I'm looking to change the colors of titles for the category pages for my world. I tried all of the headers without luck. Is there anyone who can point me in the right direction? I should be able to point you in the right direction, but after the um, after after the tutorial, okay? Uh, or if anybody else wants to do that in the meantime, but I will write down the question. Uh, change the colors of the titles for category pages, okay? If this goes really short, I'll, I'll handle it in the in the tutorial, and if not, then we'll handle it 
pronouns are. So anyway, so how you define these different columns is you say column, you have to do a row, so you have to do a container with rows, and then you define each column as a container and what's going to go inside of that column. So if you do, I usually do column medium just because most of what I create for is going to be large and then for, for smaller screens like phones and stuff, it will just stack the columns one on top of each other so it makes it really mobile friendly. And then uh, for this, I want to make my boxes six across. And you had 12 columns, so you divide six across, 12 columns, so 12 but divided by six is two columns, so I can use that two columns at a time. So I was telling you we had to do a container and a row, so let's put this inside of a container. be a row so it knows that there's a row of these and that's that's always how you structure your your row and column things for bootstrap so I have a container um, I'm actually going to change this to a section because what we're going to have to do is um, put another container in here and there's only so many containers you can nest in World Anvil. I think it's two or three, and I, I don't remember how many, but if I've got more than two, which I've got two here, then I start swapping out sections or different kinds of boxes, like uh, loud boxes or quotes or, or something in there. So, um, and so this one's going to be our call medium, so you can use these Bootstrap classes inside your containers. World Anvil is built on Bootstrap, so, so we're free to use those. Just as if we created a class called that, but it's, we're able to use the Bootstrap classes. So, Okay, so we have this, and because I changed the container to a section, those behave a little bit differently. So I think we're going to have to change how it displays. Okay, so now it's a tiny little one. And we can create some more of these across. So we have to create a, a column for each one across the screen. That's four, five, six. some more color classes here in just a little bit. Thanks, Secondhand, for posting the, the link to that. I don't have my bot up today. So. Okay, so let's see if we can get our containers going. And we don't have all of our color classes defined, so they should be blank. Okay, now it's behaving funky because there's sections. Uh, oops, and we did call MD4 on that one. Oops, why did we do that? Okay, that's actually probably more the reason why it's behaving. Sections do behave very differently than our containers. There we go, they're in a nice line. Um, sections are like 
in line so it would treat if you had like a line of text and you did a section around a part of the text it would not break and create a new line a container will break and create a new line but because we can only nest containers so deep um, I'm gonna make my palette box since it's a section now behave like our containers that's when you do uh, display block it will create a, an item that anything in that column is going to create a new line before and after it okay so we're not doing in line so and if you guys are curious and you hadn't seen my my stylus um, tutorial I did a stylus tutorial and, and this is where I'm using to go back and forth so I don't have to use the tiny little width screen editor on World Anvil. And I did double check with Demi, it's okay, it was okay. <laughs> so um, he did not mind. So we have that. And now, now the containers fill the width of each of the columns. And I like my text to be centered, so let's go center the text. Text online and poof, it's centered. Okay. You might also need um, to change your font size and to um, give yourself some padding, but on this screen, I don't need to, but I, I have some of those options in my, my tutorial code. If you have long names for your colors, you might need to do a word break. And I usually do word break all because if it hits the end of the line, it's just going to put whatever characters are on, on the next line instead of waiting for space. Because if you have ultramarine blue, which is a really long color name, you need to be able to, be able to break it down. So depending on how you name your colors. So we have our boxes. We have a nice text size. One other thing that we're going to need to do is have a light and a dark text option because if we have a light color, we've got white text is my, my default for most of my darker themes. So we're gonna need to create a dark colored text. I usually call that T black, so text black. So that would be the color is the, the text color. And I usually don't like to make it quite black, but nice and dark. So it's, it's not so in your face. So, and we haven't used that yet, but when we get to a lighter color, we will. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, by the way, if you guys have done any color palettes or if you want me to, to, to show me your world's colors, you know, whether or not you have a palette, go ahead. I think I have it set up so that you can um, put in links for World Anvil sites now. So um, go ahead and try that if you'd like me to look at the colors of your world and we can talk about how those work. Um, because I think we'll have some time at the end. So go ahead and do that. I can probably handle about three. So the first three that are shared, I will talk about if, assuming we have time. But I, I think we will. We're doing really good for time. So we have our boxes, we have our text. We have one color. Let's, let's go and pick some other colors. So I usually kind of like to do a uh, a range of my colors. If you look at uh, here on I got on uh, Bane of the Shadow. Whoops, I didn't copy the link. It opened, opened up in a different window. I usually like to do a range of colors, so I do 
at least a dark and a mid and a light and then a, a transparent I love transparent on textured backgrounds it just it just is kind of fun and then I usually do some sort of gradients for my colors so we will do some different variants and for these I'm just going to do six different blues so actually let's start here with a really really dark blue and I'll redefine color one And then we're just going to create some more of these. We have six to do, so two, three, four, five, six. Oops. <laughs> So now we're going to pick out some different colors and I'll just kind of go up in a diagonal so it's not all just going to gray. We'll, we'll get brighter and brighter as we go up. So let's see, this would be about halfway, so I need two of them. So maybe about there. And this is just a really nice way to see if light colors seem to show jumps faster than the darker ones do. So if we look here, it's really hard to see the color for color six. So that's where we put in our T black class so that the, the text show up as black and then it'll be readable. Now one of the tricks I didn't think to mention in my tutorial is in here I name my colors the same as the classes that I create so I can easily go okay yeah I want color three for my header text and it's, it's really easy to tell which ones they are. I put spaces in there so it's easier to, to, to see, but I know I can't put spaces in my classes, so. Um, but I, I always name them the same thing. And then, um, I should pull that one back up. In my other one, I also had, you know, color one through, through nine and then some, some other names uh, like white and uh, night because it came from another theme but I also have a dark version and a light version of those and a transparent and then a, a gradient that I put a G in front of so yeah so anyway that is kind of how I do my naming system you can name yours however you want but if you need ideas for a naming system Feel free to rip off my. So there we have how to make a grid of colors and then to make more, you just copy that text and then change the classes. So it's right here. So in my tutorial, I have all of that in there. I'm sorry the spacing is a little bit funky because the code container for it was was a little bit odd so there's like there I had to put spaces in between to so that they were all bunched together and there were no line returns uh, was there any other things I had in there 
Oh, one thing that I do that you guys might want to be aware of if you aren't aware of the EM text size instead of like pixels or um, what's the other the other font size I can't, I can't think but um, I usually use the EM size so you can um, if you have like your regular text size you can go bigger or smaller than that text size and you never have to worry about what your original text size is. It'll all be relative to your text size. The EM stands for the, the size of a capital M in your text. So, uh, Kitoi Poi says, do containers only take one class at a time? No, you can take, you can put as many in there as you want. That was one of the like totally eye-opening things for me. So you could have, you know, and here I have three. What happens is you have your, your base class, okay? So it's kind of a generalized class. And then each class that's in the list beyond that, so color six and T black, each, um, each of those following classes changes what was there. So it, it, it's kind of like an overwrite. So that, that kind of blew my mind when I was first learning about how containers worked. I was like, oh my gosh, you could use more than one. And it just like, it opened up a whole new world for me because I, I could make variants and make my code shorter in, in my stuff. Because I, I have a lot of code <laughs> in my themes. It's, uh, I, I think I have, oh, from my Aurora theme for, these kind of pages, I think I've got like 3,000 lines of code. I'd, I'd have to go look, but it, it's it's pretty crazy. So I, I change everything. So, okay, well, Kitoi Poi says, I've been keeping myself to fairly primitive divs and CSS, but now I can do it. Yes, you can definitely do way, way more. Um, just as a total side note, if I can find my tutorial. If you guys want and you want to play more with Bootstrap, just for fun, because we have the time. Sorry, there's an airplane going overhead. I don't know if you guys can hear it. tutorial on using images as back as borders and backgrounds for containers. No, I don't at this point. That would be a fun one to do. Images as borders and backgrounds. I will. I, I don't think I do, but uh, let me look for the bootstrap stuff first. Yeah, I made a summary of all the containers that I could figure out that we can use for Bootstrap. There's other containers, but some of them use JavaScript, which we aren't allowed to use. So that is the list of Bootstrap containers. So Okay, bye Dragon Love Water, enjoy. Say hi to Kahuna for me. Kitoipoi says, I use background images, borders pretty extensively on your site. Yeah, they are really fun and they're a really great way to spice up your, your pages. I had, on Bane of the Shadow, I did that a little bit. Let's see. I'll show you guys, because I always make a page of all the styles I, I use. So here I used like a dotted border and a solid border, and here I used an image on, on each of these. 
just to make them just kind of look like a, a combination of, of tech and primitive. So, so yeah, it's, it's really not too hard to do those. Um, did you guys have any of, of your world you wanted to show off with the, the colors you had for your world or if you had created a, a palette for your world? I, I would love to see those. While I wait for those, uh, we'll see, let's see. Rabbit Candy Void had the color of titles for the category pages. So on our category pages, there is a way to, to do it. And it's probably the same in that thing. Let's go back over. So that that's basically what I had for creating your color palettes. And you can create multiple levels of those or rearrange them however you want. But that's a way to set up your color palettes so that when you create a new t a new theme, you know that your colors work well together or you can easily replace colors that don't work well together. 